Hello and welcome. I'm going to be talking about the Arjun Mark 1A tank. Now, I've had this fantastic experience today of really checking out the Arjun Mark 1A. Why is it important? Because it is very much the future of Indian tank warfare. The government today placed what is called an AON or an acceptance of necessity that comes right ahead of a contract being signed for 118 Arjun Mark 1A tanks. 8,400 crore rupees once a contract is signed. Still some ways for the contract to be signed, some ways away. Uh, but it shouldn't take too long. It should actually happen at some stage this year. And once that does take place, it's quite clear that an indigenous platform, an indigenous tank will add immensely to the capability of the Indian Army. Now, what is it about the Arjun Mark 1A, which is different from the Arjun which is already in service with the Indian Army, uh, the Arjun Mark 1, two regiments, 124 tanks already in service. Well, let's run through a couple of key points. Firstly, this tank has got an ability to see targets much better than the old tank. The commander of the tank has got a wonderful panoramic sight, which enables him to actually see targets even behind him if they do emerge. Now, remember, tanks are very claustrophobic. The compartment where the crew is enclosed is it's relatively small. Visibility in all quarters is not very easy. But with this panoramic sight, the commander of the tank can quickly spot a target and he can engage that target himself or he can pass on that target to the gunner uh, who would actually engage it perhaps with the main gun. Secondly, the survivability of this new tank. It's got what's called explosive reactive armor, uh, which adds another layer to what it already had, the indigenously made Kanchan armor, which could actually defeat um, incoming kinetic shells. In other words, shells fired by another tank. Uh, but this is another layer of defense, which is very important. It's got a, a laser warning uh, detector, laser detector. In other words, it's a warning system which detects the presence of a laser uh, which is fired upon this particular tank because what happens is a laser is usually fired to get the range from an enemy tank to say this tank and then that's followed by an actual shell being fired. The moment a laser is picked up in a 360 degree arc around the Arjun Mark 1A then automatically if that's the mode that's selected um, there would be smoke grenades and the, the moment you have smoke grenades uh, you've got an element of protection because those smoke grenades actually end up confusing um, the laser and also thermal images what are thermal images these are systems which enable the tank gunner or the the tank commander or the driver primarily uh, to be able to actually move day in or day out in any weather condition they actually ensure that there's a, a very good field of vision and in the Arjun Mark 1A tank that's something that's actually been ensured besides the commander of the tank also for the driver of the tank so the mobility of this tank is a very big deal now I'm just going to consult uh, my notes over here uh, because one of the big concerns of the Arjun tank is that look it's it's exceptionally heavy um, and it is, let's face it, it's 68 tons. That's the weight uh, of the tank. Uh, and therefore, critics of the tank have typically said, uh, in fact, the Mark 1A is 68 uh, tons, uh, the older variant, a few tons less. But this is particularly heavy. And the critics have always said that, look, this is an elephant. It's just too heavy. Um, <clears throat> the Indian Army has to operate on culverts which exist, bridges which exist, and those cannot take the weight of an Arjun tank. Now, I did speak to, to several of the finest minds involved in the process of developing the Arjun, including the director of the CVRD, that's the institution, the Combat Vehicles Research and Development Establishment, which actually has designed this tank. And I asked him about this and he said, look, the Arjun project was based on a Western philosophy, which contemporary Western tanks, many of them are 60 tons plus, it has a 1400 horsepower engine. It is very ha highly agile. Um, the weight gives additional protection. The high acceleration uh, of, um, you know, is not compromised. Um, and this is interesting. There's something called nominal ground pressure. 
they say that the nominal ground pressure or the, the pressure per square inch is actually just a little bit more from the Arjun Mark 1A as compared to the T-90, which is the Russian tank, which is the mainstay of the Indian Army fleet. But this is the part which is really incredible. They use the same engine for a heavier tank, right? Uh, the Mark 1A is much heavier than the old Arjun. How do they ensure that despite the additional weight, they can actually perform as well? So they've modified the final drive train uh, of the Arjun, a part of the transmission, as I understand it, um, and to, to ensure that the tank is equally agile. In fact, it accelerates as fast. It goes off-road, cross-country as fast. But there is a compromise. On-road, it's a bit slower. Uh, but look, you're not going to be driving a tank down Rajpath unless it's Republic Day. So that being the case, it's the off-road behavior of the tank uh, which really counts. And this is where there's not been any compromise. So all in all, you know, it, it, it is a proud moment because indigenous weapon systems have been criticized to no end. And I can tell you in having followed the Arjun project now for, for forever, you know, 25 years plus uh, when it people were starting to talk about it. Now, this is a world-class platform and it's something you and I need to feel proud of.